Hi, welcome back to our channel and in today's video we are going to discuss timing and spacing and we are going to use Adobe Animate and this is the animation that we're going to do. So this is going to be a long video, a very long video, too long in fact that we have to split um, this video into three episodes and this is episode one. And the, the theme, the overall theme is timing and spacing, but timing and spacing isn't really just one step or one phase in the overall process, but more of a principle that we have to apply in every step of the process, in throughout the process. This is what we think about, and we're going to cover that. We're going to, um, so from... Uh, from the rough animation, from the planning, to in-betweening, to correcting, to the tie-downs, and finally to the cleanup and color, we always think about timing and spacing. This is something that we can't just cover in one video. So in this episode, we are going to focus on analyzing the design and breaking it down to simple shapes, and then we'll do the, the key poses. And then we're going to do the breakdowns. And I'm also going to explain what breakdowns are. And then we're going to set the timing. And then finally, we are going to plan the spacing. And before we begin with the tutorial, I would like to talk a little bit about our uh, memberships. So now you could join our channel. If you're watching this via a desktop computer, there's a join button below. But if you're viewing this in a mobile phone, then uh, there's no join button. So you could click the link in the description if you're interested to join. So what benefits will you get by joining our channel? So you will have access to members-only lessons where we'll go deep into the animation fundamentals. We'll discuss thoroughly the theories and the step-by-step -step process and there will be assignments for you to do, and we will give feedback on your assignments. Also, the project files of this tutorial can be downloaded by our members. So if this is something that interests you, then you could click the join button below or click the link in the description. Now let's get back to our tutorial and let's begin. So uh, this is the design. Uh, this is the design and um, I did not do the design. It was done by Meg and I'm, I'm going to animate it. And if you're, uh, if you're going to have like an animation project and you're doing it solo, meaning you're going, going to do everything, design, animation, um, etc., then you would, uh, you would design obviously and then uh, animate on your own. But if you're, you're working on a team, chances are the design would come from uh, someone else. So in this case, Meg is the one who did the design. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to um, analyze the design and break it down into simpler shapes. So that's what we're going to do. And um, I have two files here. I have the uh, AI version because this was done in Adobe Illustrator and the uh, um, PNG version, the, the image. And if you are a member, uh, you will have access to this files and also to the finished animation. Once I'm done with the animation, members would be able to uh, see it. So if you're interested in getting also the, the project files, then uh, you could click the join button uh, and join our channel. So now uh, I'm just gonna click now this image and I'm going to import it in Adobe Animate and let's break it down. So this is a very um, big file. So I'm just gonna scale this. I'm gonna click this one. So it's already clicked. I'm gonna press Q on my keyboard and then scale this. And I'm already going to like scale this to like how I would want to animate or the, the size of this in my animation. So maybe around uh, something like this. Uh, something like this would be good. And then I'm just gonna create a new layer I'm going to like draw over this. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. And uh, I'm going to press B on my keyboard. That's the shortcut for the classic brush tool. And I'm going, I'm just going to like adjust the size of my brush. 
yeah, I think this is good. I'm gonna press F4 on my keyboard so that uh, I could see like um, the other UI would disappear. And the first thing that um, uh, I normally break down is the head. So we can consider this as like a circle, this one. I could see this like a, a circle, like the skull. And like the bottom part, the um, the jaw uh, also feels like a circle, but not really like a circle, but in a like circular form, right? Like something like this. But uh, I'm not. I'm gonna draw like this one here because it's going to um, like cover like some of the like facial features. But in my mind, I could already imagine this as some sort of like two circles, right? Uh, so the shape of the head of this character is like. Or, or maybe circle isn't like the correct term, but an oval, okay? So it's like two ovals. So it's like some something like this, if, like if I wanna like draw the head again and again. And the reason why it's important to break this down into simpler shapes is it's much easier to draw. Like for example, if I'm gonna do like squash and stretch and if uh, I'm going to draw it like this, it's like, difficult, right? It's difficult to, to imagine. And if I'm going to stretch this out, right? It's like going to be um, difficult. Um, compared if we have this shape, right? And then let's apply like squash and stretch. It's now going to be much simpler because it's the shapes are much also simpler. So going back here, the ear would be, uh, so it's like three circles, or I mean three ovals, one for the skull, one for the jaw, and one for the like ear. So I'm not ever gonna, going to like break down like the facial features, like the brow, the eye, um, because they're very like simple, right? But uh, one thing to, uh, one thing that I could do is like draw a line for the eye, Right, so this would indicate uh, where the eye should be. So when I'm going to sketch out later, um, I'm gonna use that line so that it would guide me where the eyes would be when I'm going to clean it up. So for example, I'm, uh, if I'm going to like draw the head later, so it's going to be something like this, and I'm gonna like add in like a line for for the 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 eye, and then the neck. This is the neck. And when we draw like shapes or not really like when you draw, but the way you visualize it, think think of it like it's in 3D. So instead of like thinking the neck is just like this, think of it like it's a cylindrical form like this, right? So you don't really have to draw the like the base. Like I don't really need to draw something like this, but when I trace or break down the shapes, I think in, in 3D. So now let's uh, go to the body. So the body is like um, like a rounded rectangle. So it's like this. That's the body. And uh, let me just click F4 and I'm going to right click this layer, the, the, the image, the, the layer with the image. I'm just gonna right click that and go click this properties. And I'm just gonna click this opacity 50% and click OK, so that my um, like this stroke is much clearer now. Or uh, let me do that again. Right click properties and maybe bring this to 30. Maybe I think that's better. And I'm just gonna lock this for now so that I don't accidentally like draw on it. Right. So let's go back again to this layer. So the body is like um, a rounded um, rectangle. It's like this, and it's a bit tapered. the The upper uh, the shoulders is like much wider than uh, here. So it's like going. It's it's tapered, right? And we need to have also a some sort of like a bulge for the breast. You could. Uh, use a circle if you want, or I mean an oval for the breast. So I'm just gonna trace this out. 
And since the design is very simplistic, right? It doesn't have like a, de a detail. I don't need to have like two ovals for like for her breast. So just this like indication, this bulge would be would be enough. But if there, if this was more detailed and we have like something like this, then maybe I would need to also have like an oval for the other uh, breast. But for now, this is already just you know, enough. So the way we draw the body would be like a rounded rectangle. And then we have like a bulge, something like that. But again, we, we shouldn't like see the body or the basic shapes is just 2D. We should visualize this as 3D. So uh, the shoulder, right? So we, we need to think about where the shoulder is connected. So the shoulder is connected to somewhere here. And we also have like the neck, right? The neck is connected here. So, uh, so we should like visualize it like it's a 3D form like that, that it has like different sides. So if I'm going to convert this to a cube, so it would look something like this, right? It has like different sides. So this side here is where we would put the neck. And this side here is where we would put like the, the shoulders, right? And it's important to visualize it like that. But I don't really need to break this down into like a 3D shape. No, but the way I think about it, the way I visualize it would be in 3D. So next is uh, the pelvis. This one here is going to have like a shape, like, uh, you know, like a Superman outfit, something like that kind of shape. So again, when I like visualize, right, um, subconsciously I added like this base, but um, that's going to be covered with the body. But, you know, just keep that in mind that this is a 3D object. This is not 2D. It has three sides. And then let's proceed to like the leg. So the leg, um, let's locate the knee. So the knee would probably be here. So I'm going to use like a circle for simplicity, right? And then um, the, the leg and the pants are not uh, the same, right? So uh, I'm just gonna like hide this and create a new layer. And I'm just gonna press F4 and uh, and the leg is like somewhere here, something like this, right? Something like that. And this is like the, the pants. The pants is like, like tapered in the like opposite direction. Like it, it spreads out, um, on the, the base, like something like, like this, right? And, but the way I break it down, I'm not anymore going to like visualize or I'm not going, I'm not anymore going to like add a structure for the whole um, leg, but I'm just gonna add structure to the pants and the leg would just somehow like start here. So let me uh, press F4 again and let's go back to this layer. So it's just going to be like this. And the way we draw the pants is, you know, it's not a straight line, it's curved so that we could visualize this in 3D. And then um, the leg, right, is going to be something like that. And let's do the same for the other leg. So I'm gonna like imagine this like a circle and then uh, something like this and the leg. And then um, also for the body, let's go back to the body because we could actually like divide the body into two. Currently it's just like one whole, just one whole thing, but we could actually like divide this into, uh, into two. And the reason why we want to divide this into two is that it's, we need to think about its articulation, right? Because if you think about this in like a physical form, like let's say this is a toy and it's made out of plastic, it can't really bend unless it has two parts, right? So for example, this is the body. So when we rotate this, it's just like that, right? But the more parts it has, so if we're gonna like create like two parts, for example, then we can like have like an articulation for the upper part and also the lower part. So you could like have poses um, something like this, right? For example. Um, and that is like 
important to also to to visualize, right? So for the body, if it's just like one whole thing, if it's going to like bend over, like so if I don't like cut that, if it's going to bend over, it's just gonna be like this, right? But if we have it like two parts, so it's going to be something like we can have this like uh, sort of like bend it a bit and this, the upper one, bend it a bit more, right? We could have something this, this pose. So I'm gonna make this into two parts so that um, it has like more um, like articulation. So now let's go to the like foot. So the foot would have also the same concept with like the body. We could have this like in one part to like something like this, or we could have it like into two parts, right? So uh, I'm also going to draw already the like the base because this is like the, the shoe, right? But I'm going to divide this into two, right? So one, two, two parts for the foot. So the reason is, so I'm just gonna press F4 again and I'm just gonna like create a new, la two layers, temporary layers, just to like illustrate the idea. So I'm gonna like draw uh, like some sort of like a triangle maybe, for example. And then I'm gonna press F4 again and let's like add like a second part. For example, something like this. So with this like two parts, I could have this like rotate and have this pose, right? But if we only have like, for example, just like one part for the whole thing, we can't really have like this pose, right? And we could, it's just moving like that. But you might say, um, I could just like bend bend it like it's rubber, right? But if you don't have like a clear like distinction where the separation is, your drawing might be inconsistent. Like for example, you could bend the foot like this, but you could also bend it like this, right? Where does it turn? Where is like the, the anchor point for your foot? Because if you it's not clear at the start, you don't really know like, up to what point it would like bend, right? So I'm going to uh, clear this out early on that th this is like what I want, right? It's, uh, or that's the structure. So let's do the same for the other like foot. And next I'm going to break down like the, um, the arm and I'm just gonna press F4 again. So we have like bigger screen estate. And the design for the like the shirt is it's not really like sticking or like a very like fit. Um, uh, so I'm just gonna show you. Uh, so the shirt isn't like this. There's like a vol a bit of volume. So that is also something to consider with the uh, with breaking down the design. So now I have identified that. We have like this. So I'm just gonna like add it to my structure. And the elbow would maybe be um, here. And for the for the for the wrist, right? I'm not going to make it a circle because if I make it a circle, like my visualization is it's it's gonna feel like it's 2D. So I'm gonna make it like a cylinder. So I'm just gonna draw it here. So the um, the wrist now is going to be something like this. Actually, the other parts like the knee and like the elbow could also be a cylinder, but just like to simplify because it has a, a simplified design, I'm just gonna use like a circle and or an oval. And it's not really that noticeable when we, we animate, but the arm, because it's more like versatile, it could be like in any angle. And if I'm gonna make it a circle, it's very clear that it looks flat. So I'm gonna use like a cylindrical like approach. And now the structure of the hand is that, so just looking at this, right? From where we end the wrist, now we have like the palm of the hand and it's also gonna be like a cylindrical approach, something like this. And then we have the fingers. So the fingers would stay or would like, be planted on like the base of your palm. 
So now this is going to be like uh, the fingers and the fingers is like a rubber hose. So when we look at the fingers, it's not like it has like three parts because that would make it realistic. The way I look at the fingers is it could like bend like this, right? So the term of this is a rubber hose. It looks like um, this, right? And then um, the thumb, there's going to be like another like a triangle. And for this one, I'm going to make it like uh, a more like a cylindrical base and then draw in the thumb. So this is the structure. And once you get the structure, you could like create different angles to this, right? So I'm gonna try and draw like a different angle. And let's say this is where the thumb would be. And this is where the like fingers, and it's easier now to like pose our um, hand. So this is now the, the palm, fingers, and we have that triangle for the thumb and then the thumb itself. And the other, uh, the other arm, so I'm just gonna like make it a dotted um, circle because you know it's covered, this is in 3D, so the other side is a bit covered. And um, the parts are also a bit covered, so uh, I'm not ever gonna make a detailed um, breakdown of this, but essentially it's just um, the same with this one, right? So maybe the wrist is like somewhere here. So this is now like the structure. It's now like easier to animate because like when we are going to do the animation, the jump, we know where the like leg would bend, where is the, the bending point. Um, like we could already like see this like moving. Okay, and so now let's break down the, the hair. So I'm just gonna press F4 and uh, and I'm going to like create the breakdown in, different, in a different layer. And uh, I'm gonna press F4 again. I'm just gonna turn on the outline mode for this one and then lock it so that I don't accidentally draw on it. So I'm press F4 again. So now here, um, so the way I'm gonna break down the hair is to like divide this in, in ovals. Right, so this one could be one oval. And this one is one oval. And the other side is like one oval. And I think this is like one big oval. So we have like four ovals for the hair. And it, this is like important. Uh, so I'm going to stress out again, the importance of like breaking down the design into simpler shapes. Because when we are going to animate the hair later on, like for example, if you don't break this down, chances are the hair is like not going to be consistent. Like for example, like we have three curves here. And chances are when you're already like animating, there may be like frames that the curves would be four, right? And you know, that's gonna like add a bit of like wiggle to your animation if it's not consistent. But if you like break it down and like, you know, okay, we have like four ovals, like for the hair. So it's looking something like this. So now if we're gonna apply squash and stretch and like movement, it's much easier to visualize. So um, that's my breakdown of the design. And let's turn off the outline modes. It's like that. So now we could proceed with the animation. So now let's clean up uh, the file a bit. So I'm just gonna delete uh, the unnecessary layers. So this one are just notes. So I'm just gonna like delete this one. And uh, this is the hair, I think. So I'm just gonna change the color of this. So I have a selected now um, all of this. And I'm just gonna change this to blue and bring this down. Um, or I'm just gonna bring this, or uh, I'm just gonna rename this as hair and this one I'm just gonna rename this as main animation or rough animation and I'm just gonna hide the hair for now because I'm just gonna animate like uh, the main character first and then do the hair later so I'm just gonna hide uh, layer one so now we have um, we have this and now we can begin animating so now I'm going to unlock and change this the color to red. So next we would draw the key poses. And 
there's this framework that I use for key poses in an action. We've discussed this in detail in a previous tutorial, but I'll just briefly discuss it now. So basically, you start with a starting pose, and this is our starting pose, and the action would be jumping, right? So the key poses would be starting pose, and then anticipation, and then the action ex itself, overshoot, recoil, then settle. But this is more of a guideline rather than a hard rule. There are actions that doesn't have an overshoot but has a recoil, and some actions that doesn't have an overshoot and recoil, and some actions where the action and the settle pose are like blended into one key pose. So it depends on the action, how fast the movement is, etc. So our, our movement is jumping. So this is our starting pose. And now let's do the anticipation. So right now we're not setting the timing. So I'm just gonna skip a frame for now because I'm used to animating on twos. And then I'm gonna press F7, turn on the onion skin right here, and then uh, press B on my keyboard to make sure that I'm uh, on my classic brush tool. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit. And then now I'm going to do the anticipation. So the anticipation is like the downward movement. And because the action is right here, the jump itself, the anticipation is like a more like downward movement. Think of it like we are gathering like energy to do the jump. So the anticipation in this case is the opposite of the action. If the action is like going up, the anticipation is going down. So let's do that. I'm gonna press F4 on my keyboard and then let's now um, do this, right? So I'm just gonna trace over the foot. And so I'm still doing the anticipation. I'm just gonna tra trace over the foot because the foot would be like un unchanged. So I'm just gonna, I have traced the head and also the body and I'm gonna press L on my keyboard and select this and then press Q on my keyboard so that the bounding box would be, like, would appear. And then I'm just gonna like, um, adjust this. I'm going to zoom out a bit and then rotate also this a bit, right? And, and like try and like figure out like how much like down this character um, would be. So maybe somewhere something like that. And the head, I'm just also going to lasso the head, press Q again, and then, you know, rotate a bit and maybe something like this. But of course, the rotation that we did was a 2D rotation and not a 3D rotation. So we need to make some adjustment, but uh, at least we were already like, we know like the the like basic shape of this is correct. So now I, now I have like adjusted this one and maybe like have like this one bended a bit um, or I'm just gonna like lasso this part right here, press Q and have this one like rotate a bit, do something um, like that. And I have corrected like the shoulder so that it doesn't look like it's flat. And we could also like adjust the neck so that it's uh, correct in terms of like the shape of like the, the 3D shape of this. So I think this one's already good. And let me just bring this down a bit. And I'm already like imagining um, the length of the leg. And maybe we should have like also drawn in like the pelvis, but I think uh, we could already manage to draw the pelvis um, right here. So this would be where, you know, the pelvis. And since it's just a basic shape, and that's the reason why we broke this down, it's like much easier to draw. Um, also, I'm just gonna bring this up a bit. I'm going to select this and bring this up a bit. And I'm just gonna draw the, this circle and now select this and move this like outside and draw the circle here because I'm gonna use this as like a guide like when the character would bend where would be the knee so I'm imagining some uh, I think here maybe and let's select this again press L for the lasso tool and I'm gonna bring this down or maybe this this one I'm gonna lasso to this, press Q and let's adjust. Maybe it's gonna be here. It's going to like move forward and this one I'm gonna select and bring this down to here. Or maybe this one I could 
like we, let's exaggerate the anticipation pose and the reason why i like draw in the circle or it's not really a circle but more of an oval so that when i'm going to draw like the leg it's much like easier and also take note of the length so uh, i'm gonna click the comma on my keyboard to go back you also need to make sure that the length of this is also consistent with your uh, length here. So currently this one is like too long. So I'm going to press L on my keyboard and then like select this again and like bring this to the correct length. So maybe around something like that. So now it's going to look like that. That's um, going to be um, the anticipation pose and I'm going to uh, click the comma on my keyboard and period so that I could go back and forth between the frames and see if it's like it's working. And uh, currently I think it's already working. Now let's uh, decide the the arm. So we have the uh, we have the like shirt and I think the I need the elbow first. I'm gonna like trace this first and like try to figure out where the elbow is in this pose. So it's going to be um, maybe here and it's going to have like that pose and the other arm too would be like something, uh, something like this. And this would be where the hand would, uh, would be. So now let's uh, try and um, like draw in. And also now let's the shirt. It's gonna be the shirt and the uh, hand now uh, again try the cylindrical approach and uh, the palm would be something like this but now let's have it on the other side like of the the angle so currently the if i'm gonna like convert the hand into a cube it looks like uh this right it's in this angle this is like the thumb fingers um Let's have it in the opposite direction that uh, it's going to be like this and the thumb would be here fingers and this is going to be the thumb. So um, that's what I'm going that's, I'm, that's what I'm going for and let's do that. And I'm just gonna lasso this one, press Q and then try to compare it with the onion skin if the size is right. I think it's too big. And now let's decide like where the arm would be. And maybe it's gonna be in this direction, something, something like that. And I'm gonna press B on my keyboard and just like connect. Now for the other side, this is the shoulder. So I think it, the arm would be partially covered by the head. And also we have, we still have the hair so maybe it's not, this isn't really that important. It can't be seen. But anyway, let's just draw that in and the hand would be somewhere here. So now we have finished the like anticipation and let's just like adjust this later if it doesn't like feel right. If we want to like exaggerate further, have it like go down a bit, we could just like use the lasso. And if it doesn't look clean enough, that's okay because this is still a sketch. Uh, next in the framework, is the action itself, the one, uh, the jump, right? The one here. So I'm gonna skip again. Uh, I'm gonna skip a frame, press F7. Again, this isn't the timing yet. We're still going to set the timing later on. This is just, you know, just laying out all like the key poses and we'll set the timing later. And now for this one, I'm just gonna press F4 again. And it's gonna be somewhere here. And I'm just gonna trace like uh, some of the like parts here so that I could get like the consistent like length, like the head or the head shape would be like the same. So I'm just gonna like trace this. And also I'm going to trace the foot. And then let's try and um, set this. Let's imagine now the character is here and I'm just gonna press a, a Q on my keyboard and then like rotate this a bit. Um, so it's going to be something like that. And I'm going to select um, the foot, the shoe and place it here. And then now I'm trying, I'm going to like visualize 
So I'm gonna just quickly like rotate this and I might like change this in the um in the final because the angle is wrong already, right? Because uh this is like a, just a 2D rotation, right? But you know, it quickly like sets uh like the look, right? And this is good for like for the rough. So maybe like something uh like that and uh, I think the pose that you know I want would be uh, something like the shoulder would be near like the head and the pelvis would be here and uh, it's going to be the uh, leg would be bent like that and the arm would be like on the air like something uh, something like that and this would be like the hand. Um, so that's uh, what I'm going to um, do. And now let's, uh, I need the guide. I need the uh, the original design. So I'm gonna press F4 again, and then copy this one. So that's um, Command C on your keyboard, and then create a new layer, and then Command Shift V to paste on place, and then I'm gonna press V on my keyboard. Now I have a copy, right? And then let's go to um, here, and I'm just gonna place this beside here. And then I'm gonna turn on the outline mode, right? And let's go back to our rough animation. Just so I'll have like a guide in terms of like um, the length, how big it is. And now uh, let's like draw like the body and uh, the rest of the body parts. So now I'm gonna use the same technique. I'm going to like trace the knee here because I know this is already the correct size. And the reason why we're tracing so that the volume of the like the arm and the leg would be consistent from start to finish. And also um, let's lock the guide. So I'm just gonna like double click this and rename this to guide. And I'm gonna lock this so that I can't accidentally select on it. So let's go back here again, press F4 and then I'm just gonna bring this now. So there's gonna be like a foreshortening happening here. So this is where the knee would be. And also I'm gonna trace this other part. And then like maybe the knee would be here. And I'm just gonna continue. And uh, I've I forgot to add like the bulge for the breast, so I'm gonna uh, do that now. And um, now I'm going to like copy the or trace the elbow, the elbow oval circle. So now it's gonna be here, and I'm just gonna hold like or copy and paste this for the other side, or I'm just gonna like um, I'm just gonna eyeball it because I don't want it like. Um, being mixed like with the head, but for the this part here, and the good thing about this is because if you're just gonna draw like the arm, chances are it's gonna look flat. But if you're going to like set the position of like the elbow and the knee, you can like effectively like set the uh, foreshortening. So it's uh, because normally you don't like think that the elbow would be here, right? Because um, normally you're going to have it in its full length, but um, but if like uh, the part is like facing the camera, there's gonna be like foreshortening like happening. So that's gonna look like sh shorter or longer. So this is like a good like way. And maybe something like this and we have like, so I'm just gonna continue this. So now um, the next in our framework would be the overshoot, but um, the jump doesn't really have the overshoot because this is like the peak of like the, the action, right? And so we're gonna skip like the overshoot, but as it goes down, it's going to have like, uh, it's gonna like recoil. It's like absorbing like the energy or absorbing like the force. Right, so it's actually like similar to the anticipation. Like when this one would drop, right, you will see that the knee would would be bent because it's like the leg is acting like a spring, absorbing like the impact, 
right? So we could just trace this, but if we're gonna trace it, it's gonna be obvious. So I'm just gonna use this as a basis and then um, transfer the position here later. So the guide, um, or I'm thinking that, okay, uh, I wanna like cheat and just, you know, copy this, but um, I'm demonstrating and okay, so let's just like create a new, uh, a new post. So I'm gonna expose the guide because it's now lacking like frames, right? So I'm gonna click here, press F5. And so we're not going to copy and let me just adjust the onion skin so that I would know like um, the land or, you know, the ground. So I'm just gonna like create again a new layer and then press B on my keyboard and I'm just gonna hold shift and let's create this line so that we know where it should like land. And I'm just gonna double click this and I'm just gonna rename this as ground guide. And then turn on or lock that layer. And then now for this one, I'm gonna press V. I have selected this and now uh, let's like see where we want this to land somewhere here. And this is gonna be my guide. So I'm going to lock this again. And uh, for the rough animation, let's, um, we're now on the rough animation layer. Then I'm gonna press F4 again. And now let's uh, let's do this. And also the, like my brush color is red and the outline mode of this is red. So let's just change this. I'm gonna click right click and then properties. And for the outline color, you can just choose whatever. I'm just gonna maybe blue so that it's really like the, the opposite. So now uh, here, now let's um, do the uh, recoil. So imagine this animation jumping and going here. So what would be like the pose, right? So um, let's do that. And I'm just gonna trace this one. So I want the, or I think this is already good, but um, I, let, I wanna go back to my anticipation pose and I want to adjust the foot that I want it to have like this like effect, like a bend. Um, so it's not like flat on the ground. So it's gonna be a bit like bent. So let me like adjust that first. So now I'm on the anticipation pose and I'm just going to lasso to uh, this one, then press backspace or delete uh, to delete that part of the drawing. And I'm just going to like adjust this. So by adjusting like the sh uh, the foot or the shoe, you will need also to adjust like um, you need also to adjust the position of like the leg because now it has like shifted. So uh, I have like lassoed this one. So this is only like this part, and then I pressed Q so that the bounding box would appear. And now we have this like anchor point, and I'm just gonna bring the anchor point here and rotate this to the correct like position. And also for the other, this one, so I'm just gonna lasso to um, this part, press Q, bring the arm core point here and rotate a bit and then press B and then adjust. So I think I'm like, this one's like much better. And now I'm gonna press um, again F4. And then now let's go back to our uh, recoil pose. And now let me just, um, uh, I'm just gonna time lapse this. So um, now I want to explain this a bit because I want when the character is like doing the recoil, I want the head to look down a bit. And, and I think I'm also going to adjust the anticipation because if we want the, uh, the character to look down, this isn't enough because this is just a 2D rotation. So let me just like uh, compare, okay? This one is a 2D rotation and a 3D rotation would look something like this. You still have this shape, but have the eye go down a bit. And so now it's going to look like that. And when we look down, the ear is like going to go up a bit. 
So see the difference, right? Big difference. This one is like, uh, you just rotated it in 2D. This one is like a 3D rotation. So uh, this is what I'm gonna use. And also, I think I'm just gonna copy this one and then press F4. So before I forget, I'm going to adjust also the head for the anticipation. So I'm gonna press L, lasso this part, and then delete this, click backspace, and then I already have copied um, this one, right? So I'm just gonna paste, so command V, or that's control V for working on a Windows computer. So now um, it's like that. And I'm just thinking if it looks a bit smaller, so maybe scale this a bit, something like that would be good. Now let's go back to our um, recoil pose and I'm gonna press F4 again. So uh, if you look at this, they are similar, but a bit different, right? Um, the, like, the position of the arm is like an inverted version of this. Here we have this one like uh, below this one, but here we have this over the upper arm. And I think um, this is like a more fitting like pose for this. And for the subtle pose, um, this, we just want the standing up. Um, so we could just copy, so I'm just gonna click F7 here. And then we could actually just copy like the guide. So I'm just gonna click the guide, copy, and then paste it here. And let's hide like the guide. And also uh, the ground layer is good, but the ground layer disappears at this point. So I'm just gonna click this one, press F5. And I'm just gonna click F5 on this one so that they are all on twos and also this. And then I'm going to zoom out and this are the key poses. So currently it's too fast. There's no timing on this yet, but you could already see the animation. So next, what we're gonna do is the breakdown. So what is a breakdown? So breakdown is um, basically an in-between, but a special kind of in-between because a breakdown would set the direction of the other in-betweens. So if that isn't a clear explanation, I'll just show you. Maybe that's going to explain better what I have in mind. So um, I'm going to animate a much uh, simpler um, object. So I'm just going to hide um, all of the uh, layer, so the guide, rough animation, and I'm just gonna create a new layer. And this is for uh, this specific example. Let's say that I will be animating a, uh, a spring. So this is going to be, it's just gonna be scribbles. It's not gonna look good. I'm just gonna do this really quick. So for example, this is our starting pose. So uh, let's say that's a spring. Okay, so, and let's first do the key poses. So this is the starting pose, and then um, I'm gonna click here and then press F7, and this would be, I'm gonna turn on the onion skin. And then uh, next would be the anticipation. So think of the sp spring, and we're like pushing force downwards, so it's gonna like contract. And I'm going to skip a frame, then press F7. Now this is going to be the action. It's gonna be on air. It's gonna be uh, something like this. Like, uh, like it's not expanded. It's like uh, the force is like something like that. And then I I'm just gonna skip frame and then press again F7. And I'm just gonna adjust the onion skin to something like here, like this. And so that I could see like where the ground would be. And then it's going to land so this is the, the recoil and then skip a frame, then press F7 and then back to its like normal um, normal state. So I'm just gonna press enter on my keyboard and now it's like jumping, okay? So what is a breakdown? So essentially uh, to explain a breakdown, 
Um, I'm going to in between these like two key poses. So this is the anticipation and this is the action. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this real quick. I'm just gonna uh, press like F5 um, and I think this is enough like frames for my in between. So I'm just gonna like uh, start here at the center, press F7 and now try to uh, like determine the the pose and also the um, the position. So it's gonna be like this. So if you compare, um, they're like um, like that. So the in between of that would be something like this. Now uh, I'm gonna do the in between uh, here. So I'm just, I'm lacking frames. I'm gonna press F5 and then here press F7. And I'm just gonna do this real quick. I'm just gonna time lapse this. So now I'm done with uh, the in-betweens or not the in-betweens for the whole thing, but like only from, so I'm, I'm going to like turn on uh, or adjust the onion skin. And I'm just gonna create a new layer uh, so I could like draw over this. So this is the key pose and also this one. And the rest of these are in-betweens, right? Um, but if, uh, I'm, if I'm just gonna like, play or I'm just gonna turn this on loop and adjust the um, the loop bar so that if I press enter, it would only play here. So it's like that and it's kind of like, it's good, but something's wrong, right? What's wrong is the spring doesn't work like this. It seems like the spring, so I'm going to turn off the, the onion skin and go through this frame by frame. So we start off with its normal state and then its compressed state. And then from here, it's like it's floating in the air, still in the compressed state, right? But the spring doesn't work like that, right? Because if we push the spring, if we add force to it, and if we release the force, there's gonna be like that stretched or expanded um, state and then that force would allow the spring to jump, right? And we are lacking this frame. And this frame is a breakdown because without it, we'll never like think that we needed that like stretched look. So let me do the, the in-betweens um, again. So. Uh, I'm just gonna time lapse this. I'm just gonna correct a few things. So now it's back to like uh, the start. So a breakdown. So I'm just gonna press F5 twice and go here, press F7, and then turn on the onion skin. So a breakdown would be still on the ground, and I would have this more uh, something like that. So it's the breakdown now gives like more information to us animators what the whole animation would be or what or how we're going to in between this later because without this, if we just strictly, so without this, I'm just gonna like delete uh, the breakdown. If we just have this as key poses and we're just gonna do a strict in between, then it's gonna feel wrong. We needed this breakdown so that it would feel more like a spring. So now if I'm gonna press enter on my keyboard, now it feels a bit better. So I'm going to delete um, these two temporary layers. I'm just gonna delete that. And this is also true with a jump, right? So uh, now I'm gonna show the jump, for example, this one. If we are going to strictly in between, so I'm just gonna create a new layer so I could like draw over this. If we're gonna like strictly in between from the anticipation pose and the action pose, then the result would be the legs would always be bent, right? Because there's no information that this one would like straighten out, right? But a jump doesn't work that way, right? So if you jump, you would have a pose where the legs would straight would straighten up. And it would only like begin to like bend again 
once the like the character is somewhere around this area right here that would be the time that it would start bending so in order for the animation to um when we are going to do the in between so that it's going to be correct right is we need the breakdown that's the purpose of the breakdown so now let's do that so i'm just gonna press f5 to expose this and on this um part i'm gonna press f7 so i added like a new frame in between of these again a breakdown is still an in between but it's a special kind of in between so another way to think about this is that breakdowns are in betweens but not all in-betweens are breakdowns, right? A breakdown is like a more special kind of in-between because the other in-betweens would follow the breakdown and the breakdown would follow the, the key poses, right? Because the key poses is like the overview. So now I'm, ju I'm just gonna press F4 on my keyboard to uh, bring this to like a bigger uh, screen estate. And then what I want, um, so I'm looking at the head because uh, I'm I'm thinking where I would base the head of the breakdown it, because this one is a bit looking down and this one is straight so I'm gonna like base it on this so what we want for the head on our breakdown is I wanted to have it to look up a bit so I'm gonna bring the eye to somewhere here and this one would be the um, the bottom part of the face and the ear would be somewhere here so now once i have locked that in i'm just gonna select this and and i'm going to bring it here near the anticipation post and what what we need for the breakdown is the foot is still on the ground but i want it to uh it should be a bit more like this it's like more bended And now let me compare like the head. I think it's got a bit smaller, so I'm just gonna make it a bit bigger. And now uh, we need the legs to straighten up. So if the legs are straight, the body would be, it would like be somewhere here. So again, I'm gonna use this technique to like trace like the knee or at least the, uh, like the volume of the knee. And I'm gonna use this as a guide. So this one would be straight and the pelvis would be maybe somewhere around here. So the head is somewhere here, I think. Anyway, if it's wrong, if the position is wrong, we can just lasso and uh, adjust. So I'm gonna bring back again the guide. So I'm going to reveal this again and unlock it. And I'm gonna bring the guide. So where's the guide? Uh, this is the ground guide so i'm just gonna lock that again and reveal the guide so this is the guide now and i'm just gonna bring it here so that i could make sure that i have the correct size for the pelvis and the neck is like somewhere here and then I, now I'm gonna like draw out the uh, legs. So um, I'm just gonna lasso this part. I'm just gonna lasso the legs because um, I made a bit of error in like the position. So I'm holding the command key, that's control key I think if you're working in a Windows computer. So I'm holding the command key and it allows me to like freely transform this so i think it should be here like something like that so like uh the direction of the leg was a bit like off because it doesn't like match the foot anymore so i adjusted it made it made it a bit more diagonal now let's have a look i'm gonna press uh f4 and press enter on my keyboard now with the breakdown the jump feels much better but still this isn't the correct timing it's still too fast we will um, adjust the timing in a while 
But we also need, so we added a breakdown here. So now when we are going to do the in-betweens, it would be like much uh, correct, right? But we also need to add an in-between from here to here. I mean, add a breakdown because notice that the leg is bent here and it's also bent here. So you might think if uh, if you're a beginner and you are going to in between this later you might think that it's always going to be bent but when you jump it's not always like bent like that it's gonna go back to a straight and then it would bend because um think about it like it's a spring and you need something to like absorb the impact of the jump so that's the reason why as you land, naturally, your legs would straighten up. And then once it hits the ground, it would bend because that would like absorb the impact, right? So if we don't add a breakdown, what would happen if we are going to in between is that it's always going to be bent. And that's not how our body works. So we need a breakdown between um, this frame and this frame or this key post and this key post. So let's do that, right? So I'm just gonna press F5 twice because we're animating on twos and I'm gonna click this frame, then press F7 and we're gonna create an in between, uh, I mean a breakdown. Uh, now I'm gonna press um, F4. So now um, I'm just gonna copy this head. So a bit looking down, so as the character goes down, she is like looking at the ground, something like that. And maybe I'm just gonna rotate this a bit. So what we want is we want a breakdown where the legs are straight, but um, I want to have um, the foot. I want it to, I want to exaggerate like the foot a bit to give it a more like visual like interest. Um, and I want it to be the opposite of the breakdown here. So what we can do is here, we will see like the the base of the, the shoe. Like it's gonna look like that. And also try to like, look at the like path what is like the path of the jump right so it's not going to be like this it's going to be like that so the direction of this should be a bit like a diagonal because of like the direction of your jump and i need again the guide so i'm gonna uh, reveal the guide make it visible and currently it's not visible because the frames of the guide is only up to here and I'm already working here. So let's bring this, uh, so I'm just gonna unlock the guide and I'm gonna go here and then press F5 so that the guide layer is exposed up to this point. And for the guide, I'm gonna select the guide, press V on my keyboard and then just adjust it here. I'm not gonna trace this anymore because um, it's gonna be like a different like post, but I'm just gonna bring it near so that I would have like a reference on the like size, length, and width of the, the body and the other like body parts. Now I'm gonna like uh, lock this again so that I don't accidentally draw on it. Let's go back here, press F4, and then let's draw again the body. So now I'm going to bring the guide here and I'm gonna rotate it and I'm just gonna like make sure that my length is correct. And now uh, I'm going to change the, uh, the direction of the pants because the direction of the pants originally is um, like this, right? And I'm going to change the direction of the pants to like this because of the perspective change uh, because of like the angle. Now uh, with this like angle, we could now see almost like the like bottom part of the the pants like that. 
I think I could bring this down a bit. And the reason why you don't like want to use uh, the guide like in like everything because there's like a good case that you want to redraw because you know as we move the angle also move the perspective also like changes depending on like the rotation of your uh, character of the the object. So this is like one like example and because of the perspective, there's also going to be for shortening so you can't really like use this exactly but you can use this as a point of reference so now we'll think we'll try to analyze that if the character is like jumping and now preparing for the landing how would her arms move um like this um i don't think so i think it would be like uh hanging in the air something like this so let's do that and also, um, I'm just going to go back again to our first breakdown because we kind of forgot that uh, we kind of forgot the sleeve on her shirt. So I'm just going to add that in so that I don't like forget this later. And let's go back to our second breakdown. And I'm going to just use this or um, this. If I'm going to trace this and it hits like some of my uh, some of the existing drawing, um, it's like hard to lasso. So I'm just going to uh, use this to trace this one here so that it's like easy to select. So this now it would be my guide for the volume of the arm. So it's going to be somewhere here, I think. So I think this is already good. I'm going to press 4 again on my keyboard. And then let's um, have a look. And let's bring the ground guide to here because now it's stacking frames. So I'm just going to select this and then press F5. And then let's have a look. So with the breakdown, the animation feels a bit better, right? It feels more correct. Now we could feel, even without the timing yet, without like the in-betweens yet, you could now like feel the impact because of the added breakdowns. So next we are going we're going to set the timing. And people say that in animation it's all about timing and spacing. So what is timing? It means the temporal space. It means that how long is this current drawing being exposed? So currently, the timing of this animation is um, this frame is or this drawing is exposed for two frames, and all of them are exposed for two frames. So it's basically we're talking about still space but temporal space, the space between this and this on our timeline. And currently, this is their space. Spacing, on the other hand, the one in the term timing and spacing, it refers to the physical space. So that's the space that we see in our canvas. So this is spacing. This one here is timing. So if I'm going to move this, you are adjusting the spacing, right? And we're going to talk about spacing um, in a while. But for now, let's focus on the timing, the temporal space. Now let's say, for example, this, I'm going to click F5. So now this drawing is being exposed for three frames. So now if I'm going to preview that, that's going to like give a different feel to the animation. So for example, this, I'm going to expose this for two more frames and I'm going to press enter. You'll see that now it has like a different feel. So this is, if we're going to adjust here, if we're going to adjust the spacing, in the timeline because now the space of from this frame to this frame is by this much right so if i'm gonna like select this and hold click and drag basically i'm adjusting the timing so let's do that let's um adjust the timing and currently because this is just the key poses there's no in-betweens yet right so what you're gonna do or what you want is to like already like set like how much frames do you want for the in-between, right? And normally when I do that, I just like click F5 like randomly, just spread out my key poses. 
So now I'm gonna press enter on my keyboard and see how it feels. Actually, this one's already uh, this one's already good. But remember that a breakdown, this one, is uh, this isn't like a key pose, right? This is more like uh, this is an in between, right? But just a special kind of in between because it's a breakdown. But so I'm gonna hold click and drag and bring this closer here, or I'm just gonna leave space for like one more like frame here for the in between. But essentially, this is still an in between, right? So I'm gonna make that like faster, and I'm just gonna hide the ground guide for now, and let's just like have a feel for the animation by just um, this one. So this is like you know what I do. I spread out the frames, and you know like. If I want to extend this, like for example, we want to add like a more hang time in the air. So I'm going to expose this frame. So I'm gonna click this and press F5 like twice. I'm not even sure if the number of frames like I added is correct in terms of like when I in between that it's on twos and etc. But you know, I'm just like clicking like F5 and clicking on preview to see how it feels. So here the like this one is staying on the screen much longer. So that's gonna give like a more hang time. And I, I want this one to be like, um, I want this one to a bit from this frame to this frame to be a bit shorter. And when you set the timing, it's still not final, right? It's just your initial plan. So this is like uh so this is now like my initial plan for the whole animation that overall it's going to uh the whole animation would be 1 second and I think a bit half right or 1 second and up to here so that's like my initial plan for the animation and I think currently this already works for me and um when we do the in-betweens later, the timing would be adjusted a bit and that's okay, right? This isn't like the final like animation, but more of like just getting the feel, getting the feel of it. And I think this one already works. We could already proceed with planning our spacing. So if this one is planning our timing. In a while, we're gonna plan the spacing. So next, we are going to plan the spacing. And let's get into the basics of spacing first. So let me like hide everything and let me create a new layer. And I'm just gonna like show you the basics. Let's go back to uh, frame one and I'm just gonna zoom in a bit and press B on my keyboard for the classic brush tool. And I'm just gonna draw a circle and you know just uh, create a very simple sample. Um, so, uh, and we're animating on twos. I'm currently 20, using 24 FPS as my overall FPS, and we are animating on twos. So I'm gonna skip a frame and then press F7. This is uh, the, the new frame. And the basics of spacing is that if the physical spacing, I'm not talking about the temporal spacing here, but the physical spacing here, if the physical spacing or just simply spacing is small, for example, like this, this is like small, or let me adjust this. So I'm just gonna press V on my keyboard and select, and then I'm gonna move this closer here. So now I am adjusting spacing. The timing is the same, but I am adjusting the spacing. So if the spacing is small, you will perceive it as slow. So if I'm going to um, go back and forth on my keyboard here, um, a previous frame after frame and I'm gonna turn off the onion skin you will see that it's slow right there's like a slow uh, or a small difference so if you play that over in time that's going to be perceived as slow but uh, let me click again the onion skin but if the spacing is big like this we will perceive it as fast now I'm gonna turn off the onion skin I'm go going to back uh, go back and forth between the frames see that is fast right we are perceiving it as fast timing would also be a factor right with this spacing but the timing is big that's going to give a different effect it's it's going to feel like it's abrupt but it would feel a bit slower 
Whereas if it's closer to each other, it would be, be much faster. So that's why timing and spacing go hand in hand. But that's the basic, right? So the basic is if the spacing is small, we will perceive it as slow. If the spacing is big, we'll perceive it as fast. Now let me uh, delete this and let me re show the rough animation that we have. And so that it's like much easier to visualize, let's um, create a much simpler version of this, like just a circle. Okay, so I'm just gonna like create a new layer and turn on like the uh, outline mode for our rough animation and I'm going to lock it so that it won't show on my onion skin, only this one. And I'm just gonna use uh, maybe the, uh, the body right here as a point of reference, maybe um, here. That would be our point of reference. And this one here, I'm gonna press F7. And I'm just gonna make it small so that it's easy like to plan the spacing later. So I'm just like creating a circle on like the middle of the chest. And now I'm going to adjust the onion skin that it would show all of the frames. And let me zoom out a bit. And let me create a, a new frame. And then let's like draw a line on this or let's like try and figure out like the path and let me hide, let me hide now the rough animation. And um, let's like for the keyframes, let me like just draw like um, a bigger circle or us, let's like set the uh, keyframes as our key poses a circle and lines as our in-betweens. And remember, this is the breakdown, right? So I'm not gonna like put a circle there, but instead I'm gonna put uh, a line here, that's the breakdown, and circle here, that's a key pose, key pose, and then here, that's the breakdown. And uh, we're not gonna need this anymore, this layer six, so I'm gonna delete that. Um, so we have now this, um, like movement, right? We have this like arc and this is the breakdown. And this is like the difference between a, like a keyframe and a breakdown because a breakdown is still an in-between. It's still like part of the in-betweens from this key pose to this key pose, right? But only that the, this one is like more special than the other like in-betweens because it's like going to set like the movement, right? But basically it's just part of like the in-between. So we already like have done the in-between, one in-between here and one in-between here, right? Uh, and it turns out that it's the breakdown that we did. Okay, so now um, we are going to like set the spacing. So if I'm gonna like add in uh, so this is just a guide, okay? Um, there are a lot of ways to like plan your spacing. Some, uh, most animators use, um, or the ones that uh, animators in, in movies or animated series, like probably like have a more like uh, the professional like timing chart um, that would like look something like this. But Basically, I'm not going to use that and I'm going to use like my own simplified version right here because what matters is is that you have like a system that you understand, right? That um, you don't just like add in timing charts on your animation because your teacher told you to, but you put that timing chart because it's helpful for you or helpful for the team. The advantage with the standard timing chart is that's what the uh, the timing chart that everyone uses in the industry. But for now, let's like have a more simplified approach that's it's easier to understand because uh, as of the moment, what's more important is that you understand the overall concept. And once you understand the concept of spacing and using like guides like this, then if you uh, encounter like the real timing chart, then it's easier for you to understand. So now let, let's, uh, let's continue on uh, with this. So let's just say that this is the actual like space. So if I'm gonna place it here, 
meaning I'm putting the in-betweens in the middle. So if I'm gonna like place it here, meaning I'm favoring it on this like uh, kipos. So um, we would need like an in-between here. And this one here is the anticipation. So I'm just gonna like label this. Okay, um, let me undo that. This is the start, right? This is our anticipation. So I'm just gonna uh, abbreviate that. And this one is like the action. And this one here is our recoil. And this one here is our settle pose. And this one here is our breakdown and breakdown. So I'm just gonna label this as uh, break one, or breakdown one, and this one would be break two, or breakdown number two. Okay, Um. so now, uh, when we are like going to um, anticipate, what we want to see is I want uh, this part here to slow down. And obviously, we also want to like add compressed version of the frames here because we want to slow down um, here in the air because that's going to be the hang time. And we can't really like slow down here, right? Because physics doesn't work that way, right? Um, so when something like falls down to the ground, it doesn't like slow down here, right? It's not like gonna put a break on this. So it's like the spacing would be something like this, right? So once it goes up in the air, so let's just say this is like the ball going up in the air, it's going to um, slow down here and because of gravity, uh, the force of the ball is going up and gravity is pulling it down. So now it slows down and, and then it's gonna fall down. And as it falls down, it continues like to build up speed, right? And then uh, hits the ground, right? And we don't want to have it like this because we don't like want to slow down at this like area, right? Um, so that's something to, to consider. Uh, we don't want to break or we don't want to ease at this like breakdown, right? But uh, from breakdown to the, the recoil, we're gonna like slow down here, but not in this area. We're gonna slow down here. So those are like the parts that like we want to slow down. So uh, I think we can put this to like half and we, we are going to like is in to this frame. So maybe add another frame here and let's try and like add here. And also spacing is about the progression of the frame. So let me, um, let me create a new layer and uh, hide this. And I'm just gonna show you this um, really, really quick. So for example, we have like a circle here. I'm gonna skip a frame, press F7, and then big spacing, okay? Uh, skip a frame, press F7, and then um, the next frame would be, the spacing would be a bit smaller, so maybe around here. Skip a frame, then press F7. Now I'm gonna like divide this again into two, so now the spacing is uh, a bit here. Skip a frame and then press F7. Again, I'm gonna divide this into two. And then you could continue on with this, right? Uh, like bringing like the, spacing smaller and smaller. And the result is it's going to ease into frame. So uh, I'm just gonna create a new layer. And so the spacing looks like this, right? Big spacing and then it's got, it gets smaller and smaller. And the effect is it's like it's slowing down. The opposite is speeding up. So let me let, just delete this and let me just create a circle right here. So um, like the next frame is have a small spacing and then let's build up from this. Uh, the next spacing would be a bit bigger and the next spacing would be a bit bigger and so on, a bit now bigger. And then here somewhere uh, at this point and then I'm gonna press enter on my keyboard. The effect of this is it's like it's speeding up or the way we perceive it is it's speeding up and take a look at the spacing. The spacing is getting bigger and bigger and thus 
it feels like it's speeding up. Or this is what we call ease out easing out of frame the one before is ease in easing into frame so the the terms if you're confused about the terms it's not really that important what is important is you get to understand the concept of speeding up and slowing down and why it why does it feel like it's slowing down and why does it feel that it's speeding up and that you know how to control your spacing so that it feels like it's speeding up. You know how to control your spacing or the progression of the spacing that it feels like it's slowing down. So I'm gonna delete this. These are just temporary frames. Let's go back to our guide. So this is what I'm planning. From start, it's gonna have like, uh, it's not too big, but it's a big spacing. This is the spacing. And it gets smaller and smaller when we go to the anticipation. And from the anticipation uh, then onwards is it's going to have this spacing, right? So it's going to build up speed. So I'm going to add frame here and also here. And uh, think about it that if I'm going to add here, there's going to be like a lot of frames. And if there's like too much frames, your animation is going to be too slow. So you also need to be careful with like adding too much frames. So I'm not sure if like only one frame would suffice or two, but uh, anyway, we could just delete that later, right? Uh, so this is my current plan. And from breakdown, we have a frame here in the middle. And then we are going to ease into this frame. So we're gonna cut this to half, half, half. So we could see that the spacing is getting smaller and smaller. And later on, I will show you how to use this information, how to use this plan to do the in-betweens. So I'm not sure if this is like a lot of frames. Um, I think it's a lot um, because uh, how much frames is this? Like one, two, three, four, five, at up to the action. But uh, for now, let's just uh, keep it as is. And from action to the recoil pose, um, I'm just going to press F4 so we have like a bigger like space. So here, I we can also just like have, um, have the previous, because this is an arc, right? So like the spacing here should be uh, like symmetrical to the spacing here. So we could also like add in like two frames here and then builds up speed, right? The spacing gets bigger and bigger. And from here, it's going to, now we have on this post, this is the breakdown and that uh, is already on the ground, right? The one we drew earlier, this post, right? It's already here, right? The uh, this pose, so this is the, the leg and the foot in case you don't understand that. So um, the breakdown that we did earlier, this pose is, you know, this one. And this breakdown is this in our, like, guide. Okay, so from here, it's already on the ground to the recoil. We're going to ease into this uh, frame here. We need to slow down. Uh, I think that's enough. And then from here to the Sato pose, we are going to uh, slow down again. And then like, I don't want the Sato pose to be abrupt. So I'm going to add in like frames here and also here so that we have like slowing down a bit or let me just like favor this. So maybe the added frames would be closer here so that we still have that um, easing into frame when we go to our saddle pose. So uh, let me just like make a mock up here so that you would understand. Um, the start pose is the one, the standing, just it's start. Sorry for the bad drawing. Uh, so that's the like starting pose. The anticipation is the one that when it's like bent, right? Something like that. And the action is the one in the air, something like this, right? And uh, this is the breakdown, and the recoil is the one uh, in this pose. And the settle 
is back to its like standing pose like that right so um from this pose to this pose this is going to be our timing we're gonna have uh like a frame here in the middle and then here and also like an in between here when we're gonna do the animation it would feel like it's slowing slowing down here now we already have like uh the breakdown right from breakdown or from the anticipation to breakdown we have planned two frames so uh, we have one in the middle here and one in between of the, these two so it feels like it's speeding up and we'll have like one here in the air and here from going up to like this point you'll have like something like this and then going down you also have like speeding up you'll see that it's speeding up and from here to this somewhere in between of them so I'm just like making a mock-up animation for now, but I'm going to demonstrate like the actual in-betweening like later. And from here, we have one in the middle and then in between here in the middle again and in between of the, these two. And from here, we have like a frame that's favoring on this part and another favoring on this part. So this one has a bit uh, of a like slowing down uh, like movement. So this is like the current uh, plan. This is our like uh, our plan for the spacing. And um, I'm also going to like, I'm not gonna delete this and uh, we are going to send this out to our members, this whole plan um, in case our members would um, like to see this. So I'm just gonna like adjust this like drawings or I'm gonna lasso this drawing and bring this to a new layer so that it's like much cleaner and this one i'm also going to lasso this part here so all the drawings i'm just like going to lasso all of the drawings So that's the end of episode one. And in episode two, uh, we will be focusing on in-betweening. I will show you how to use the spacing plan to do the in-betweens. You can check out the description to know the posting schedule of episode two. And if you like my teaching style, but want a more um, thorough explanation of the concepts, then I believe you would love our members only lessons. So you can uh, click the join button below or um, the link in the description if you're interested to join. So um, that's it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.